Yep, yep, there we go. Blessed with some rain, finally. Well, I shouldn't say finally. We've had some rain. 48 hours ago, a storm blew through here with 80 mile an hour winds that just, I was gonna say demolished, that's dramatic. Did some damage right before a garden tour. That's just perfect timing. Outside, it's not piping hot, construction noise. If you don't know, neighbors having a pool put in, siding being done, something being done with their pool. It's just, it's been, it's been a very noisy summer, but a little bit of rain and all the noise stops. That gives me an opportunity to come out here and do the July garden tour a few days late, but hey, that's okay. I have been doing a lot of cleaning up out here and there's still just debris all over the place. That storm took down almost all the palm trees. That Adenidia stayed up, all four pots around the pool. They were good. The Alexander was leaning. That's the, the triple over here, hiding behind the fronds, the big one is leaning. That's easy to pull up right. That wasn't a big deal. Went to store out some reinforcements to place around some pottery so that those won't be blown over hopefully anymore. Had to chop the tops off some banana trees. Again, not that big of a deal. They'll keep growing. It, actually, we're going to talk about how well these things will grow. I just cut this with the machete right here. Did that, I don't know, six hours ago? Something like that. And this is all new. None of that was there six hours ago. That was all down in here, it was a nice flat, well, it wasn't a perfect cut. I clearly it went like that, but you get the point. Resilient plants. If there's any plant that I want to take some storm damage or I want to have taken some storm damage, what am I saying? Bananas, they're sturdy. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. But yeah, some of the plants are going to be looking kind of rough. And yeah, that's just the nature of things when you have storms like that blow through. This one had an umbrella land on top of it. That one, that landed on top of it. And this one, it's not looking too bad anymore. This was leaning quite a bit, but this was laying on the ground underneath the Robolini palm right here. And the Robolini palm was laying underneath the Croton. And on top of the Croton was the Queen palm. And these were all flipped over on their sides. I didn't have a chance to blow things off before it started raining. It's, that seemed like a pointless thing to do while it's raining outside. It's misting, but still everything's wet. And then the lime zingers, they took some damage. For the most part, it was the big bananas. They've looked way worse before. I already came in, did a bunch of pruning on here, open things up on the inside, let them put their energy into putting out new foliage. That's really what you want to do with those when they have damage like from the bad storms. Otherwise, things are looking pretty good out here. There's going to be some weeds. I've been doing a little bit of weeding reworking some irrigation issues out here. Had, you know, record breaking heat. So I had to last minute run some new lines in the coils. You have to let them set out this kept pulling back together. So I figured it'd be best to pull it around the patio where it would heat up and I'd be able to stretch it out more. Things are looking all right. Cannas, not as full as they were because I came in and I thinned these out and I took a whole bunch of those over to my sister's house. That was in a video. Got them planted up at her place. The gingers over here are not doing much at all. Pardon all the, it's, it's fine. Just pretend it's not there. Flaming Torch Hedichiums, they took a big hit last winter. I'm surprised that they're alive at all. And the, we'll just look at what the heat's been doing to them. And the poor things are just cooking over here, which hasn't been a problem the last couple of years. I think it's just the fluctuations, the up and down, it being in the 70s one day and then 103 a couple of days later. And the lack of humidity, although it's been fairly humid the last few days, but we went through a period where it was just bone dry out here. So I think that those are probably the worst of everything out here. Kinda, no, this guy, he's looking sad. Planted up these Ensep Moreliais in the spring with a bunch of pineapple lilies in the front and the storm just, yeah. I've been collecting stakes, <laughs> trying to get enough so I can just stake those flowers back up. This one, the Ensep, the wind, I don't understand how the wind blew it over this way, but it did because everything else was blown this way in the yard. I started to push it up and I've had issues when this has happened before in the past with bananas and they have that much strain on them and I move them up too quickly, I end up causing more root damage. So I've just been giving them a couple days to see how much it will crush on its own and then we're gonna slowly tilt it back up to how it needs to be. Also lots of little bajus popping up in here. I keep pulling these things out like weeds. There used to be a baju clump in here that I removed because there's, there's more than enough baju bananas back there, right? Don't need any more of them. And then I put the end sets in here. That one right there, you see it. It's um, <laughs> looked better. And this one over here, it just, I didn't want to grow. I'm the same irrigation, same soil, same everything, just 
Ah, doesn't want to grow. Kind of have a similar thing going on over here with these too. The one closest to the front, lots of growth. The one closest to the driveway, not so much. I can only as assume that that has to do with heat and the blacktop or something along those lines. It still look good. And uh, I am constantly having to remind myself with everything out here where I keep saying, I feel like things should be so much bigger and it feels like we're behind. I actually got most of these things planted up much earlier this year than I have in years past, but we didn't have warmth. And most of these plants, they don't really do much without warmth. It's really only been warm and summery outside for like the last four weeks, maybe six weeks. June and May were very cool. There are a few hot days scattered in there, but nothing consistent. And it's amazing what you notice when you look at the garden after a heat spell. Not like, you know, triple digit heat spell, but just like normal summer temperatures. Where I live, that's like generally upper 80s to mid 90s. And you just see an explosion of growth with just a few days of those temperatures. So yeah, while I do keep feeling like things haven't done as much growing as they probably should, Considering the weather, I think they're actually looking pretty good. Drought, heat, cool weather, and crazy hot weather. They've had a lot to deal with. Impatience, they're coming along. The gingers were very sparse in the last garden tour and they're finally starting to fill in nicely. There's some gaps in here, but that's okay. Those will fill in some more over the years. Caladiums behind the impatience looking nice too. Over here have a begonia. This one is not smooch. What's your name? We do this every single time. Pink teardrops. Begonia, pink teardrops, perennial begonia. Just started putting on some flowers. It's doing some spreading. That's what I like to see. Time Traveler Hosta is right below it. Variegation is weakening on it. And I talked about that in the last video. And I don't know if that's from a change in sunlight or what's going on over here. It still looks good, just not as good as I would like it to. But again, maybe it just has to do with all these inconsistencies. It is putting up a flower though. And I haven't had this one flower form before, so that's good. It's a sign of healthiness and a happy plant. Want to see them flowering. This will be its third year in the ground. And by the third year is when you want to start seeing some growth out of those things. The impatience right around here, all the way down, and then continuing around from here and over. I had to replant all of these twice. The ones over here had to be replanted because dogs. Yeah, you liked running through the flowers, didn't you, Turbo? Him and his cousin Louie. They turned out to be kind of destructive, but at least they had a path that they would follow. So it's just right here. You can see where there's an abrupt stop. I really haven't been able to do anything about that. It just is what it is. It's, I don't want to talk about the sprinkler line. Dropping for a new irrigation company. Get it handled someday. Then all of the ones down here, I think I talked about this in the last garden tour. Pretty sure I did. Well, these all got destroyed when I planted this new hedge, the laurel hedge, which is just looking great, isn't it? I wasn't sure because of those temperatures and everything that had been going on and there was a little bit of die off on this one right here, but it's putting out all new growth on the inside. See all that nice light green foliage? And that's not something I even usually would get out of a laurel hedge during the summer. So that's one pro. I think to these wonky, weird temperature patterns that we've been having is that I've been getting some growth out of some plants that I wouldn't normally be getting this time of year. Planted all of these, they were labeled as six foot skip laurels. They're probably more like eight. And every single one of these, except for this one, although it's starting to now, all the other ones about three weeks to a month after getting them in the ground, put up another eight to 12 inches of growth. You can see it on top, kind of. You sort of see that lighter green color up there. That's all the new growth. So they all got to put on about another foot. I'll just go up to a foot, that's fine. I wasn't expecting that. I figured these would just sit still, maybe drop some leaves and not do much of anything until next year. So that's been a very pleasant surprise to see some more growth. I'd already talked about the growth on those. This is one that I wasn't sure about, but we've made it to the end of July, moving into August here. It's had to deal with triple digit temperatures, extreme drought. I mean, it's on irrigation, so it hasn't really had to deal with the drought, but dry air, just harsh conditions. And haven't had any more die off on it. That's a good thing. That's a sign that the plants are doing much better, that I don't really need to worry about them so much. So I came in here and I replanted all those impatience. That got me to my point. Through a bunch of caladiums in the background, some of the pedicets are popping back up and that's okay. The little ones in the front, I'll leave them. I kind of like them there. I think it naturalizes things, having those pop up from the front. And just look at all this color. There's not that much orange. I don't know what happened to all the orange. Perhaps between planting up the first round of impatience and then getting the second round in the ground, I 
mixed up some of the six packs or something. I don't know. There was supposed to be a more even dispersal of orange in here, but I don't mind it. I'm just happy that they're even here. They've done so much growing in this last month. When I planted them, they sat still for a few weeks, which is pretty normal with impatience. But I was starting to think, like, am I even going to get that beautiful show that we want to see out of these plants every year if it's taking this long to get them going? Get some fertilizer, lots of water, and heat. The heat rolled in and just boom. All kinds of growth coming out of them. Got lucky with this too because typically I don't see impatience for sale in June. That's when I had to rebuy all these flats to replant this area. But the nursery still had some, so I was able to grab some and get this redone. I wasn't able to redo all of it, so it used to go all the way down here, and I said, well, I'm not going to do that again. I'm just going to go from where you can actually see, because I'm not going to probably bother replanting an area that you can't even see from anywhere. After having lost all the other ones, it just doesn't make sense. This is good. I think that that looks absolutely beautiful. At Insoni, I keep forgetting to talk about this one, every single garden tour. I did something different this year and I was like, yeah, we're just gonna wrap you around a light bulb. That's it, nothing else to say about that. It, it, I wouldn't say that this was exciting. Just there's an update. Still have it, it's still out here. It's still growing like crazy. Oh, the gate. That's to keep the dogs from running through here. That was also a big problem is there's this gap right here and they kept flying through, which doesn't make sense to do when I put in a very nice pathway right here. And since I put the gate up, the dogs are using the pathway. Finally, over here, this is basically the same thing as over there, except these didn't get trampled, but they don't get as much light because there's a huge, you know, mimosa tree up above everything that shades things quite a bit once it flushes out. So these are all the ones that were originally planted and they're not that much smaller or not that much bigger than the ones that were freshly planted down there. That's just a difference in light. Not as many flowers on them either. There's a smooch begonia planted in here that I had one on each side of the path and something flattened one of the other ones and it looks like it's just now starting to put up a new leaf. So that's good. The roots are still down there. Hopefully someday we'll still have those on each side of the pathway right there. That's what I wanted. I want to be able to see them on each side of the pathway. So there's been a bunch of stuff going on over here. I just don't know how to show it because I don't want to film my neighbor's house. Now if we'll get to it. Bismarckia seems happy, which is surprising to me because I feel like it's not getting enough light, but it keeps putting up new fronds, so I get, I guess it's okay. This area up here, I didn't film this, so it's important that I talk about it. This was all grass. This is just a, a grassy hill up here for the most part. There's a buckeye up there, but otherwise, nothing else. I came in with a couple of truckloads of mulch that got dumped off in the driveway and some compost, slightly graded the area and put a good six to eight inches of mulch and compost down in here to create a new gardening area. One I'm not going to be using a lot this year just because the, you know, lack of privacy and everything. And I'm waiting to see what they're going to end up doing with their landscaping when they're done with their construction. But to get things rolling, popped a viburnum in the ground right there. Another one right here, Pragans, they're evergreen, so it's gonna help create a bit of a screen and some privacy. Have some annuals in the front, just impatiens and caladiums. Mostly because I have extras and I did this here last year and I thought it looked beautiful, so I figured why not do it again. As far as perennials are concerned, I filled this area in. I guess it doesn't look like it, but it will someday when they grow. Right here, right there, and down. You can see them scattered around in here. These are all game changer hydrangeas. There's a tag for one of them. There's a game change, like game change. Game Changer Hydrangea Pink. There's three of those, three of the Picotees, which are white, and then three blues. And I tried to stagger them through in a random pattern. They'll all go about 24 by 24. There's just gonna be big balls of those lace cap hydrangeas in here. The Game Changer Hydrangeas, I should mention, that starts from right here. So Hydrangea, 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 Hydrangea. A whole bunch of them in here. So this will eventually just all be filled in with color in the front and then going to be working some evergreens into the back over there. The Game Changers are a nice one because they'll bloom on old wood and new wood. It's just supposed to be a more sturdy lace cap. That's what I'm hoping for and that's why I put them up here because this is an area where it's going to need sturdy plants. Irrigation doesn't hit this spot all that well because this area was never meant to be a garden right? It was all just grass up until I filled it in. It'll provide some nice texture and color. Lace cap hydrangeas have really great texture to them. That's something I want to see when I'm looking into more of a shady area where I can't do a ton of planting. Then I want plants with lots of detail on them. Within the flowers, a lot of texture in their flowers. This isn't, it's very narrow right here. Probably have, I don't know, 12 feet between the wall right here and 
the fence. I guess that's not that narrow. It feels narrow. That's mostly because they have, I don't have to, but I would like to keep a path open for the dogs to run around by the fence because my dogs and their dogs are friends and they like to run and play by the fence. So whatever plant, there has to be a middle ground. That's all that is. Middle ground for planting. I also move on to more exciting things. Alocasia Borneo Giants. Put one on each side of the steps over here. They've done some growing, not a ton, but some. This one right here is getting ready to flower. That's always fun and exciting. I may cut that off though. I would like for the plant to focus its energy on putting up growth. I don't want it wasting its time on flowers right now. Still pulling up honeysuckle from this area. I used to have the major wheel or honeysuckle on each side of the staircase right here that went over an arbor that just kept flying apart over the years. So I said, forget it, got rid of it, dug the honeysuckle up, moved that down there. So it's growing up part of the fence. Not gonna do much this year, but next year that will look nice. And this fall or the spring, <laughs> keeping my eyes open for a couple of nice narrow evergreens to put in place of these alocasias. This is just an, I want something right now that's impactful that will add some privacy. And they went on sale for 50% off. So that worked out very well, very well. But in the long run, I would like a couple of nice big evergreens on each side here. Cause again, it's just about getting some privacy and some structure over here then working lots of details in around everything. What I do with this area is not typically what I would do with forming a new garden bed where I start filling in with little plants first. Usually want to go with what are going to be the big impactful bold plants. What are the bones of the structure and then work the details around it. But you couldn't do that with this because, well, there's a, there's a wall right here. So working my way from the front to the back because the middle's not going to be all that accessible once I get bigger evergreens put in back here. Probably just gonna do a hedge of yews or something, or maybe nothing. So maybe they'll put up a hedge. I don't know. Time will tell. We'll find out. The Miami planters. Oh, they're so pretty. They're called Miami planters because that's the model of the pot, which you can barely see. Not necessarily because the creeping jennies have grown so much, which they have, they've grown quite a bit, but because the <laughs> variegated sun impatience are trailing, which they're not supposed to do, but they're certainly doing it. Oh, the palms, the palms are good. I have trouble sometimes, and I focus too much on the under plantings when really, like the star of the show should be the palm trees. They're just little babies that I picked up from Home Depot. Actually, they have put on a decent amount of growth. Each one of these has probably put out probably a good four or five fronds, which is pretty impressive for those in general, plus this time of year of the weather we've been having. I don't usually have my mind blown by Adenidia palms until there we go, camera. Until the rings on the trunk are up where they're visible. So once I got some rings up here, I like them more. Right now I'm just like, yeah, y'all are cute, but I wanna see those trunks. That just takes time. The sun impatience though, I mean, wow. The top of the pot is right here and these are trailing down. I'd say a good foot to foot and a half down the edge of those pots. It's more noticeable on this one right here. It's the top of the pot's up here. So about 50% of the plant has just grown and hanging over the edge of the container. Last year when I grew the variegated sun patients, I talked about how uh, there was just some weird stuff growing on with their form. They weren't making a lot of sense to me as far as a sun and patient goes. They were, well, they, they just had a wonky shape to them, which didn't work when I had them planted in around my containers where I had two oranges and two pinks of the variegated ones. The pink ones were doing great and the orange ones were just kind of wild and rambly. Now, well, I know why. They weren't labeled as a trailing one or a spreader. That's what the Sun Tory people call the Sun Patients when they have more of a low and wide habit, they call them spreaders. Like the spreading salmon, I would call this a spreading orange. Wouldn't you? I mean, that's just a great big ball and most of it's hanging down. Hanging way, way, way down. These have gotten massive though. Look at the size of these. There's just one of those in each one of these containers. These containers are 39 inches tall. It's just freaking massive. There's also a tropical storm called Acacia planted in each one. I don't think that they uh, are able to keep up with the vigor of the impatience that are in here. So I don't know how much they'll end up doing, especially since they seem to be much more dependent on heat to get moving, but maybe things stay consistently warm, which they should, because it's still summer, then start to get more growth out of them. And they had probably tripled in size. They are just scrawny little things when I planted them in there. See, there is some stress, some heat damage and whatnot on them, but overall, I think they're looking pretty good, considering they have all this hot pavement to contend with. Hey, baby, he's being so good. Gingers, 
they're looking good. Not much to say. They're Alpinius. There's the Zerumbas. I would say since y'all last saw them, they probably doubled or tripled in size, mostly by filling out. The insides of them were pretty sparse when I planted these up and very little effort. Haven't had to do much with them. I water these maybe two times a week, if even, which is saying something because gingers really like a good amount of hydration, but I planted these up with a mix that's very moisture retentive and that made a big difference. I could have run a drip, but I already have drip lines running across the patio to the four different pots everywhere. I don't I didn't want two more. And this has worked out well. Usually I have to just water these things like in Stanny, but by using a mix that holds on to more moisture, they've been so easy and so great to grow. And this spot right here isn't always the easiest spot to grow these because it's just pavement right the sun comes through it's pretty harsh right there but uh yeah they're they're, they're doing really well i get distracted by that dog very easily <laughs> can you see why so freaking cute there's a decent size comparison these are just some little like three gallon 10 inch containers when i planted them up they've got a nice spread on them the last few years when i've planted those they've done pretty well but I would say this is the best they've done in a long time, at least of the times where I've had them planted by the dolphins. It's been a long time since I've done that, uh, probably four or five years since I bothered having them over there by the fountain right here. Usually I just leave that open these past few years. I'm glad that I did that, that I decided to revisit that because it looks really nice. Looks very nice. The uh, beach planters, which are now just trailing Vinca planters, <laughs> these ended up filling in a lot more than I expected them to. The idea was just to plant Three of these cascading trailing vinca over the sides of the pots which i just i absolutely love and then it would be nice and open and i put the white sand in there and some little sand castles and it just looked like a little beach scene it was perfect but they ended up spreading a lot more than i expected i've planted these plenty of times they never spread like this I just, they must just be extremely happy some things are frazzled frizzled just not looking their best because of the storm but that's not a big deal. Those things will all snap back in a few more days. The Gossia Palms, that's what these are, Gossia Palms. New this year, talked about them a bunch, and I'm probably in the June Garden Tour. Maybe it was the May Garden Tour. They were delivered, not looking that great to begin with, and then just stuck out here into full sun, which isn't generally how you want to do things, but I wasn't expecting them. They were a surprise. Let's, we'll just leave it at that. But they are flushing out lots of new growth on them not very fast growers one on the right more so than the one on the left one on the left has taken more sun damage but that makes a little bit of sense this side gets just a smidge bit more sun than the right does one observation i have on these well two fairly slow growers i put them into a fresh mix they have fertilizer they've been getting liquid fertilizer once a week so not the fastest growers at least not when it's cool when we have a heat spell they start doing some growing, but just the way the weather's been, haven't gotten a ton when it's been cool. When it warms up, I do notice, like I can see the spikes in the middle really start to push up and actually do some moving and some growing. Otherwise, they just kind of sit there when it's not warm. Second thing, extremely, extremely tolerant. I'm not gonna say drought tolerant. So I want anybody who lives in place where you can actually plant these in the ground to think that they'll do well for you in a drought. But these have been nothing like a lot of the other palms I've tried around the pool. Because again, I've talked about this multiple times in this video in every garden tour. It gets hot with all the pavement, the reflection from the water. And uh, there, I can't just put any palm I want to in these containers. Generally, the Adenidias do okay, but I don't get the best growth out of them because they end up having some heat stress. Alexander palms, they're my favorite for overwintering in the house because they're much more tolerant of indoor conditions than Adenidias are. But... Not so tolerant of the sun and the cooking that's over here. Windmills, Scorch, I've tried them before. They just end up cooking. And the Washingtonias I've tried around here also didn't do great, which are plants you would think would do really well, but I think that it's just too much fluctuation with them where it's hot and then cool and hot and then cool and then hot and then cool. And they end up stressing out and wilting down. These have been troopers. I don't think they look the best. I'm not crazy about their fronds. I love the trunks on them though. They're just freaking fantastic, thick, girthy, neat looking trunks on them. The fronds just give me majesty palm vibes, which is not one of my favorite palm trees. 
I would not want to overwinter this in the house. I'm not going to. I have a company that takes the palm trees away in the winter and these are gonna be their problem because the fronds on these have spider mite magnet written all over them. I am not <laughs> going to deal with it. That's something I'm just not going to mess with and I'm not going to deal with. I would rather that be on them. Overall, the containers are looking pretty good. The palms, I do like them a lot. I just wish they didn't look so crummy when they got delivered. And that way I wouldn't be spending my summer just trying to nurse them back to health just to get them looking nice when, I'm, what, there's only a couple months left of summer and they're not even looking nice yet, right? I'm hopeful by September <laughs> this will be looking much better. I guess you think about though, it's only been like eight weeks and again, it hadn't been super warm, so that makes a difference. Everything they've been underplanted with is looking great. Have the catharanthus. This one's called like blueberry something something. This one's that red sorry i don't remember but they're doing really well again the vinca they're flowing beautiful kind of messy but that's all right have the oyster plants in the middle overall i've just been very happy with these planters the flowers did do some fading when we had the uh the heat wave move in i still think they look really nice whether they've done some fading or not still very pretty flowers yeah that's what you get with the heat sometimes you get some burnt marshmallows on your hydrangeas all good that's the vanilla strawberry hydrangea. These white flowers are gonna fade out to a nice pink. <laughs> Pretty soon I had a random hiccup pop up there while I was in the middle of a sentence. They've been doing well. That one I've had to do a lot of staking on, but it's seemingly working out and staying in place. This one, I've had a lot of trouble with the drip on it and I don't know why. That's one of the reasons I ran a new line because I was like, maybe there's a clog somewhere in the old line that I couldn't figure out. This thing was getting watered and watered and watered and it would perk up right after it was watered and then like three hours later just Phew. And I was watching the drippers and they weren't really putting out much water even though there's five heads in there which you think would be enough. But again, this, this spot is always a challenge because this gets the most sun out of anywhere on the entire patio. So I ran a new line, I added one more drip head so there's a lot more pressure going to it and now the drips are fanned out much more nicely. I adjusted the time of day that they're running by moving them back to where this starts now at 4.30 in the morning where it's not having to compete with other people's irrigation systems or anything else that might interfere with the water pressure. And then it goes again at, I believe, 11 in the morning and then again at 5 o'clock in the evening. And finally, that seems to be working out, but it's only been two days, so fingers crossed, maybe that has done the trick. Otherwise, these would be looking beautiful down here. They were looking great up until that heat rolled in. These are the Purple Candy Impatience, which, I, why am I showing you this one? This one doesn't look that good. I just explained it. This one's, it's been struggling. Yeah, let's look at the one that hadn't been struggling. Ah, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Much better. Purple Candy Sun Impatience, Electric Orange Compact Sun Impatience, Tropical Storm, Colocasia, just being a fighter, doing what it has to do to get one leaf popped up from that one there. Oh, two, it has another one over here. That's fairly impressive, considering if you saw the video when I decided that I was going to get these and I received them, mailed them, planted them, they were just tiny little things. And that's a lot of competition they have here with the sweet potato vines and the impatiens. That's a lot to fight against to get their foliage up. I wasn't sure if they'd be able to do it, but it's looking like they can. And they're looking good too. I just love these vanilla strawberry hydrangeas so freaking much. These are massive, absolutely massive this year. Like, I mean, look at how big, they're so freaking huge. Tell me that isn't just gorgeous. I love these so much and they're only going to get looking nicer and nicer as time passes. The white flowers on there are starting to get some pink speckling on them. They're going to fade to a nice pink. They're going to have some pink that starts off in here. You can see some of it and they're not a lot, but it'll be pink down here, white on the tip, some brown from the heat, but, but, but who cares? It still looks nice. Brown and pink go together. I'm not stressed about that. It's fine. Everything over here is doing okay. So the Colocasia bikini teenies, that's need, they need to be a background plant. And about every couple weeks, I have to come in here and pull them from inside the sun patients. And I did that this morning. So that's why things are looking kind of fresh and haggard. But I also, you know, I had to do all the storm cleanup and get all the broken debris and limbs out from these banana trees, which are now very much shading the sun patients right here. I thought that that might happen, but I wasn't sure. And I figured, you know what? Sun patients, they can go part shade up to more sun. They just won't be as big and vigorous as the ones that are getting more light. And that's, you can see that right here. I didn't get rid of any of the bikini teeny colocasias. I just pulled all the ones that were growing from the inside and 
causing a problem. There are some spider mites in here though. And I assume that's just because the dry air that we had been having and the drought and lack of airflow from things being so dense on the inside. That's why it's just a bunch of sticks in here. Cause I went ahead and I just pulled them. I just yanked every single leaf off from in there that had signs of spider mites. I've been spraying with soaps and neem, being very careful to not get that on the flowers. The problem is the the leaves on these, they're made to repel water. So these will fill up with water and they pour it out. So things don't really stick. So that's something I'm going to have to be watchful for and pay a close eye, pay a close eye, pay close attention to all that, to the spider mite. Don't want that to get out of hand. Sable miners, not a lot's changed with them since the last video, since the last garden tour, I should say. They're growing, recovering. That's just the theme for the palms out here this year. It's going to be about recovering hibiscus. Look, I just love this yellow hibiscus. Isn't that beautiful? I don't have a name on it. It's just a really cute, nice, yellow with a pink center, that white outline. Flowers on it are kind of little right now because it's been through some stress because the sit, the heat, and I, I've talked about it, you know what's going on. You can see it's not far away from the gingers that aren't too thrilled about <laughs> the way they've been cooking over there in the corner, but we're pushing through that. End of the month, August is usually still hot, but nothing like July. The crinum, this is, this is the best it's ever looked. On my camera that looks kind of yellowy brown. I don't know if that's how it will end up going through the video processor. In person, this is a very lovely, nice green that you would want to see out of a crinum lily. This is the crinum persephone. I've had it for a long time. Only blooms in July. For the first few years, you grow them. Don't usually get flowers unless you plant one that's really big and established. I've had this one for a long time, and it has one, two, three, four flower stalks on it, and it's already put out two that have fallen and dropped off. And there might be some more that are still going to come up on the inside. Each one of these is about, that's probably four and a half, five feet tall. These big trumpet shaped pink flowers. I love that on top of that glossy green, wide, thick, jungly foliage that you get in the rest of that crinum lily. Just a trooper, finally. That's so fun, right? With perennials when you have them for a long time and you just have to wait and then you get to that point where they go ahead and they just put on a show. And it's only going to get better every year. There's gonna be more and more stocks coming up off of this thing after like, not a decade, but close to it of waiting to see a show from those. Okay, down here. Well, I mean, you can see it. There's not a lot to talk about right here. I already told you I trimmed up the bananas. Have another ginger right here that's doing very well. It really likes that spot. The heliconias that I had planted in here, well, they're, you can barely see them anymore. That's why when I planted those, I talked about how I didn't want to fill it in all the way because I knew the hibiscus is going to bush out and it would end up probably choking out a heliconia. I knew that the ginger right here, flaming torch hidicium, pretty. Let's get ready to bloom. That was gonna come out, so no reason to plant one right there, and still everything else is filled out, so it was a fun idea. Now I know to probably just not to bother doing that again. I was hoping this would have more flowers on it because it has just been blooming like insanity for the last couple weeks. This is a candy crush, hibiscus machetos, or just bubblegum pink flowers on it that aren't open and really looking all that great right now because it's overcast and it's raining. It's starting to rain a little bit harder, actually. I should probably wrap up this area so we can go under, get under the umbrella and talk about house plants or something. But with, uh, all that's really left over here is this plant I talked about in the last garden tour. I could not remember what it was and it had been driving me crazy. I've had it for years. It's an awesome plant. Great big, huge xanthosoma like leaves on it. Doesn't come up until June. It's late to emerge. It's a voodoo lily. I knew that much. And finally got the ID. It is Soronatum giganteum or Typhonium giganteum. Same plant, nice spread, have more of those coming in the mail. Talked about that in the last video during the vlog. The ginger, look at it. And it's just looking beautiful. Flaming torch, it's a few weeks behind. It's normally in bloom by now, but I don't mind. It just means more time to enjoy and appreciate the flowers on there. Although I do wish they were open for the garden tour, but that's all right. You'll be seeing plenty of them. I never hesitate to show those off. When I'm filming outside because they're some of my favorite plants. Put this hanging basket together uh, just out of random plants that were left over that haven't been planted yet through a couple of royal velvet supertunias in there with a dragon wing begonia, a division off of a heliconia, and with the way the heat had been it just it got intense so I ran a drip line up to it. It's just not very attractive but it's kind of nice not having to water it <laughs> and I've noticed a pretty good difference in the amount of growing that's going on in the like four days it's been since I put a drip on there. Talk about everything over here. I mean, kind of that everything got smashed, <laughs> but it's, I think it'll be okay. Damage could have been much worse. It started raining harder. So had to retreat. Really? It's just 
The Leimzinger xanthosoma, it's a little bit wonky now. It lost a lot of flowers on that sun patient. It's normally beautiful. It's a tropical rose sun impatient. Looks just like the orange ones that are down there, which you can see all the way from over here. Isn't that just magnificent? How vibrant that orange was? If only the growth on those was more reliable, then I would say that's one of my favorite plants. But last year they were weird. This year it only worked out because they were in the front of a container where they can come over the edge. You don't need to, I was just down there for so long. We don't have to talk about those. Everything over here. I actually did a lot over here in last weekend's vlog. It didn't even talk about it because I was so focused on this new glider, which I, I heard you. I'm, I'm getting new cushions. You can, everybody who had some opinions about that, calm down. I told y'all I don't like the cushions, I'll be getting new ones. I just like this because it was a hard top and it's not rusting and falling apart like the other one is. That other one's gonna, something else gonna happen with it. I don't know yet. I'm offering it up to some people if they wanna try and fix it. They don't wanna throw it away. So let me see if maybe somebody can restore it. Loving the glider. It has been very relaxing. It's nice that it's long enough to lay down on. Couldn't lay down on the other one. It's too tall for that. So it's good to have one you can lay down on. It does fold down into a bed. I don't, it's not that easy to put it down. You have to pull a couple parts. It's actually easy to put it down. Putting it back up is not easy. You need two people, so I haven't messed with that. That's an, definitely an update since last garden tours. There's a new glider out here. No, it's not as attractive as the other one, though I think the hardtop looks much nicer than the fabric canopy. What y'all didn't know when I talked about the old glider in the last video is I kind of skimmed over the fact that the other one is covered in mold and mildew stains. It's very old. And it's been outside for years. I've scrubbed it and kept it clean, but all that stuff leaves behind stains and it just looks gross. This is nice, new and clean. I'm gonna put some new cushions on it. I'm not gonna have to worry about the top on this one caving in and water collecting on the inside like it did with the other one. It's just, it's much better this way. And when I get the new cushions, it'll be looking even better. So in the process of setting that up in last week's video, I also cleaned out this entire area, but then I didn't even talk about it. I had plants sprung all over the place in here, things that needed to be planted that are more for fall projects or late summer for, 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 for late summer projects. The brain moves faster than the mouth when I'm doing these things. And that stuff was all over the place over here. So I got everything put away in a more organized fashion where they'd be more safe from the extreme heat and easier to keep, I was gonna say moisturized. Hydrated, that's the word. So I have a few lace cap hydrangeas over here. Those are more tucked into the shade. I picked the, I did talk about this. I picked the Monstera Deliciosa up. That was down here and I moved it back because with the triple digit temperatures we were having, it just didn't seem like a good idea to have it pushing out into the sunlight. I think it just would have cooked and fried the poor thing because it was already starting to cook as it was when we weren't having temperatures that were in the triple digits. Just made sense to scoot it back. And then that opened up the space right here to go ahead and put these other plants that well, they don't even belong here, so they could look better. That is protecting an outlet. I know it doesn't look good. I should find a more attractive pot, but I just needed something to throw over the top of a little outlet that's down there. And then just lots of little plants that I didn't want sitting out in the sun. Lots of begonias. I have the variegated bird's nest fern over here tucked away with the McDowell and caladiums. Got the fountain going, looking nice. Comes over here to the gingers. These are Alpinia preparatas, the little version of a red cone ginger. It's a dwarf red cone ginger. They haven't been flowering all that abundantly. And when you look at them, you can see the stress. And I can only assume that that's just from that up and down and up and down like I've been talking about. I upped the fertilizer on these to uh, twice a week now because I've noticed that without that, they're just, not growing, which means that the blend that I used when I potted these up must not have been good, which doesn't surprise me. I potted these up with a blend that I'm not really a fan of, but I had some left over. I was fair, like, well, they're gingers. They'll grow as long as they get lots of water, they'll be fine. But it didn't take into account that they are also nutrient hogs. And I think that it just wasn't enough. This foliage on here reminds me of what I see on a ginger when they're planted in a very sandy location. It's nitrogen deficiency and some heat stress. And the more I fertilize them, the more green I'm getting on them the more flower buds they're putting up. This also is lining up with the heat. I planted these in early May and they just sat here and did nothing for like two, two and a half months. It really isn't until about two weeks ago that I started to see some growth on these, maybe three weeks ago when things warmed up and we started to get some rain and some humidity. So that in line with upping the fertilizing seems to be working well for them. I just, I would like to get the flowers to start moving and doing something else. It was an experiment planting them over here. I wasn't sure how they would do because the sun over here is kind of weird. 
pretty intense in the morning. It's pretty intense most of the day up until the start of summer. Once summer hits, the sun shifts, and then it's more shaded in the afternoon. So I was like, okay, I really just need to get them into that part of the year and then they should be okay and they have and there's been less damage since the sun has shifted and they're not getting afternoon sun but i'm thinking they may not be getting enough sun to push out more flowers i don't know time will tell we will see the planter this edinidia planter right here it's been doing great very full like it's, it's extremely full this is it's overflowing has the spring fling caladiums inside there that i just love planted those in that container about two or three years ago and just you know as we expect with our plants every year get newer bigger and bigger growth out of them that spring fling caladium just putting it out there because people always ask me what was that pink one spring fling that's what that's called awesome caladium one of my favorites i planted this with verbena as a trailer it hasn't really done much since the sun has shifted and i knew that that might be the case but it was an experiment now i know one of them you can see where there's more light kind of comes through sort of like this this is how the sun moves through and you can see how that's working out for the verbena because they go all the way through but pretty much only that one is still growing but now i know i've had to play around with plants this year because of the tree pruning and changing the sunlight from that and then my neighbors with all their trees so it's been an experimental year and i'm learning a lot about what can go in what areas now and what to plan for it's just how the gardens go right as time progresses we have to usually switch things from full sun to or switch plantings from full sun to shade i can pull this off there yeah, love that. Yeah, that didn't take long. There you go. Yes, you can have it. It's very polite. Such a polite grab. Love pulling off the old leaf bases from the Edinidia palms. This Edinidia palm looking great. I know I just bounced from one subject to another, but it's a garden tour. Basically, we're just looking at plants while I ramble about plants. And I have no voice, so I don't know how much longer we'll be going on with this video. But it's doing great. Filling out very nicely. Putting out a lot of new growth. I think that it's happy in this spot. Pretty sure I talked about it in the last garden tour, but... The queen palm was over here last year, and for the last few years, the Edinidia palm has been over there, and I decided to swap them around, because you couldn't see the queen palm when it was over here. If you were sitting at the table over here, it was just a trunk, because the foliage was all up high, and it was tucked away into the pine trees. You couldn't even notice it from the rest of the yard. This is a down lower, so you can notice it, and it's a lighter green color than the queen palm. The trunks have that smoothness to them, so they stand out more. It just makes so much more sense to have this right here, and to have the big queen over here where it's visible from pretty much the entire yard. The verbena that I underplanted the queen palm with are looking great. There's more sun over here, <laughs> much more sun. I was so happy to be able to plant verbena again. It's been years since I've had enough sun out here to plant verbena. They look pretty good. Stressed out, but yeah, you know, everything's gonna look stressed out after those storms and the weird temperatures. And you know, it's very sad moose of Florida over here. It'll be fine. It's a banana, gonna grow just like everything else. This Alpinia purpurata is a pink one and it's not one of the dwarfs so you can see a huge difference between the growth on this one versus these over here right yeah they look very different this one is supposed to have a really beautiful hot pink flower on it and i really hope we get to see those this year i'll be bummed if i don't get any flowers out of this growth wise just like we expect with a lot of plants that got planted did nothing for several weeks and then just boom lots of new growth coming out of it so it's happy it's moving just i would like to see some buds forming on it now. I think it's probably going to need to do some more growth vertically and do my best to stay on top of fertilizing and hope to see some flowers come out of that ginger because it's a really, really pretty one. This is, oh, so pretty. Isn't that beautiful? Colocasia teacups, tea party. Of course, as soon as I come over here, the drip starts going off. Has gorgeous foliage on it. You can see it starts out this nice light color that under certain lighting conditions has a really pretty red hue to it and then it blackens out like this. And they have that cupped foliage that stands upright, fills with water, pours it out when you're getting a lot of rain. We haven't been getting a ton of rain. It's just beautiful though. Look at all the color inside of that leaf. The uh, black coral colocasia and the sapphire gecko, some of my favorites of the nice dark colocasias. This one, it's up there. This is in my top three for sure when it comes to the dark foliage on the dark foliage color caseas. Everything just fell apart as I was saying it. Orchid's been blooming. Well, going out of bloom now, but looked nice while it lasted. Albo's growing, seemingly happy because it's been doing a lot of growing. Aeroids over here. The Warokianum has not been happy until I moved it back here and it's putting out new growth and a great big beautiful new leaf. But the only spot that I've been able to find for it where it seems happy is where I can't even see it. So 
I don't even care. Seems to be a good spot for it. The sun doesn't hit it all that strong. It gets hit by the misters, which are running right now in the area. This is the tortoise garden. Not garden. This is where the tortoise hangs out during the day. He's inside because, well, you know, it's not. This is not tortoise weather. That's been fun. I've enjoyed having that area, getting to watch the tortoise roam around. The tortoise has free range of the whole backyard. But when I'm not able to pay attention to him, this is where he goes. It's nice not having to worry about him digging underneath the fence and disappearing. He can't get out of there. I think it looks pretty nice too, especially in Turbo. You're, you're saying, you know what, you're fine. You look good there, Turbo. It's no big deal. You can stay right there. The little lava wall I put in, I'm enjoying. I think it looks nice. Tropical vibe. Blends in well with things. I think it kind of ties everything together fairly nicely. And over here, I have the Colocasio Waikikis. He's been talking for a long time, so just expect the brain to keep stuttering. They're doing okay again. Everything's been going off the weather. I'm surprised that they're even alive, honestly, with the heat and everything we've been having. The... my favorite croton that I've ever grown. This is Freckles. The Freckles croton. Looking magnificent. I want to give this one a repot. I think it could use some fresh soil, but it has just grown like a champ. Least needy croton I've ever grown. It has little leaves on it, so it's not like the great big giant croton leaves, but it's so colorful. And pretty drought tolerant compared to all the other crotons. I mean, all the crotons, when you get them in the ground, can be drought tolerant. I don't need to go off on a how to grow crotons tangent. For in the home growing, sturdy croton. Great croton. Transitions well when you move it outside. It really doesn't skip a beat, and that's nice. The areca palm. Look, look at it. It's so vibrant and beautiful. It's been a few years since I've been able to get that nice yellow tone that you want to see in a Rika palm because the maple tree was shading it quite a bit. Water just poured off of that right down the back of my shirt. Startled me. And I'm loving how it looks. I've forgotten how beautiful this is when it gets... It's a beautiful plant when it's green too. But when they get the full sun and you get all that color, it's just... It's a magnificent plant. It's gorgeous, graceful arching fronds on them. It just looks beautiful. One of my favorite palms that I think I've ever grown is this one right here. I love that areca palm. Lots going on with the gingers, the curcumas. They've been flowering pretty much all summer. Looking good. There's another one back here that should be getting ready to put up a flower. Oh, there's some weeds in here. Should be getting ready to put up a flower sooner than later. This one was just one tiny root when I got it last year, so it's nowhere near as far along as the one in front of it that's been flowering like Oh, champ over there. Coconut palms, they're good. I mean, there's, I don't know, they're coconut palms. Green Malayan, red spicata right here. All new, so not a lot to report on other than the spicata is coloring up nicely since I got that in the mail. I unboxed this in a video a couple weeks ago, maybe a couple weeks ago, I don't know, time's an illusion. Who knows when it was. Getting a lot more color on it and that makes me happy, it looking a lot better. A hey, gold Malayan over here that's, you know, I'm not impressed with it, but it'll get more color as it grows. And then the sea grape, well, I don't know why I said it like that. There's nothing to report on. I just, I got it potted up. If you haven't seen that video, it was in the last one, and here it is. That was just a few days ago, so nothing to report on. Nothing's changed there. And nothing else has really changed over here. Just keeping things moving. Got some damage from the storms. Gonna have to keep working on that. Keep walking around, pulling it all out. <laughs> As time goes, I've been waiting for him to move so I can get back over here. The foot planter. I ended up throwing some seeds down in here with the Sunkiss Bromeliad. Isn't that a beautiful Bromeliad? Gorgeous color on that one. One of y'all suggested that I throw some seeds down there and I thought, hey, that's a great idea. So I tossed a bunch of old seeds out laying around from the Amaranthus Amaranth Perfecta tricolor. It has red, green, and yellow foliage on it. And the seeds are coming up. They're about ready to get the trim. It'll thicken them out. Get some more color under there. On the deck planters, <laughs> which y'all didn't see was me almost fall over as I was saying that. I need to come in and pull the sweet potato vines. Not out completely, but out from inside of everything. As much as I love an Ipomia, I just, this stuff, right, it gets so annoying. Like, just grow down. Stay down there. You don't need to be up here. That's not what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, some sun and patience in there. Hibiscus have been doing great. Lots of growth <laughs> on the hibiscus. They have some damage from the storms and from Japanese beetles. The Japanese beetles haven't been that bad. I see them every now and then. When I see them, I just give them a squish. They bad several weeks ago and I used DE powder in the evening on the plants where I was fighting them the most and that seemed to work fairly well and haven't had many issues with them since. Got lucky there. In certain areas around the city, they've been very bad this year. And I just see a couple of them here and there. Just flick them off or squish them. 
That's the same thing I've done for the last few years. It's been a long time since they've been a major nuisance out here. But uh, why am I walking away? I was talking about these. But that's why there are some holes in that flower. Unfortunately, the hibiscus are in their little resting phase, so there's not a big show of flowers to give y'all in this video. That's how they do, though. You know, they flower abundantly, then chill for a few weeks, then flower abundantly, then chill for a few weeks. Well, right now, they're chilling. It's pretty normal for the end of July. They usually take a little rest period when we have those triple digit temperatures and heat and drought. They tend to reel back the growth and hang tight for things to cool back off again. Oh, and not last week, the week before, put a planter up there inside of the crown of the queen palm that has a trailing begonia in it. I haven't tried those before, so I wanted to see how those would do up there. And a red candy sun patient is in there as well. Not a lot to report on it. It's only been like, what, a week and a half. There's some growth, not a lot. Actually, th maybe there is a good amount going on in there. I just haven't really noticed it. You can see the drips going right now. The drip coming out the bottom. That's why there's this black line dangling down here. I had this tucked up nice and tight against that trunk and the squirrels keep messing it up. I would be upset about it, but at least they're not chewing on it. Like I figured they would be. They go up there and they get the husk out of the queen palm. So far they're leaving the planter alone, which I'm shocked by. And they haven't chewed up the hose. So I'm just gonna not complain and be happy that they're not being more destructive. Not much has changed in the new hill garden over here. The sprinklers are running. I'm not gonna bother going over there. Everything is kind of in the chill phase. So the blue jingles, hydrangeas, they're resting. Everything's just resting. I think in a couple weeks they're all gonna rebound with some more flowers who so just there isn't really anything to report over there right now. We just, you know, just forget about that. We'll talk about that next month. Yeah, as far as the backyard's concerned, I think that's everything. Been repotting some aeroids. The Dracaena over here I'm repotting. This one is called uh, White Aspen. That's the name on this one. Very tender. Very tender foliage on it. But as long as you just don't touch it, it's absolutely beautiful. I think that this has my favorite variegation on it out of all the fancy Dracaenas. Well, the mimosa tree. I don't know how, I almost forgot to talk about this. In pretty much every garden tour this year, I've had to talk about how I wasn't sure if it was even alive up until June when it finally flushed out with some new growth. And I didn't know if it would end up flowering because of how much growth had died off on it. They only bloom on second year growth, but it is, as of today, covered in flowers. Part, it looked pretty sparse a couple days ago because most of the flowers blew off. So what's on there right now? Look at nice and fresh. The one nice thing about that wind and the storm, well, actually a few nice things that blew a lot of dust and debris out of here, but also it did a good job pruning out the old flowers that weren't looking so hot on there. So now it's looking great only having the nice new fresh ones. Just fun little pink puff balls. That's been a nice surprise. This is getting a big prune this year. I'm going to wait probably three more weeks. But whenever it's done flowering, as soon as it's done flowering, whole thing's being topped and rounded off. It's hanging over the pool. And mimosa trees, I do love them. They're one of my favorite trees. They are so incredibly messy. It's not something I want hanging directly over the pool. Since they only bloom on second year's growth, need to get that prune in right after they're done flowering so they have time to push out some new growth. And uh, as long as it's not too hot out, right? I don't want to do that prune while it's you know, 100 degrees outside. As long as it's nice and cool, going to be giving that a big heavy cut back. Really looking forward to tomorrow when things dry off and I can come out here with the blower and get all the dirt and everything cleaned out from underneath all this stuff. Storms, they just wash all the gunk to the edges, which is great. Just like I was saying with the mimosa tree, but it, I would have rather this not all been like this for the garden tour. But here we are. You just going with the flow. Uh, heck, if y'all had been out here a couple days ago, you would not believe that this is the same yard because there was just junk, leaves, pottery, dirt, debris. It was so messy because I'm directly downhill from a construction site right now and we haven't had a lot of rain. It's gotten a lot better. I think St. Louis is about out of the drought. Depends on what county you're in. We're still in a little drought bubble in St. Louis, but for the most part, we're getting out of it. But just dust from all the dirt and tons of gravel they've been putting down. It's just like clouds of it. Then washing over everything in here. So having that wind come through, it blew a lot of it down here, but then it rained and that helped wash a lot of it away. So it all worked out. The bananas, they need to be pruned anyways. I'm not upset about it. They look better now. Okay, a little bit misheveled, but you get my point. They'll be fine. Just trying to keep it positive here. Hey, baby. He's looking at me like, um, excuse me, can we go inside? I think he's 
ready to go. Anyways, comment down below, say hi. Love talking to everybody. What's going on in your gardens? Everybody making it through the droughts and these insane temperatures we've been having okay. Hopefully your gardens are okay. More importantly, hopefully you are doing okay because, you know, take it easy out there. Stay cool, don't push it. It's been a nice summer. I'm liking how the gardens come along. There have been a lot of changes this year, drastic changes this year, having to put in a new hedge. That's, I guess, identical to the old hedge, but bigger. So that's nice to be able to upgrade when you have to replace something due to storm or weather damage. One, two, three new garden beds over there, a whole nother one over there on the hill. There's at least four, five, six new garden beds that'll be happening by the end of this year in total. I already done some of them. And evergreens in the ground. I didn't talk about the Pharaoh's mask. Do we need to talk about the Alexander palm and the Pharaoh's mask? There they are. Pharaoh's mask alocasias. I don't do anything special with them. I threw a handful of cotton burr compost around the base of them. Otherwise they get watered with everything else that's in here and the rest of this container is just filled with leftover impatiens and caladiums. Nothing fancy going on here. A lot of these impatiens are just ones that reseeded from the ones that were planted down there last year. And the seeds got into the container. I didn't even plant a lot of these. The Alexander palm has been, this is worth talking about. <laughs> don't know how I skipped over it. Lots of seeds from this one. It's been flowering all summer, dropping seeds all over the place. Uh, still some damage from the heat and the scorch, but otherwise pretty big, happy, healthy plant. And I do like these colocasias down here. I go back and forth with the Pharaoh's mask. When I see them spread out in a grouping like this, they just so much, I mean, look at that one. What a freaking weird leaf, that's so cool. Okay, yeah, that's good. This is plenty long. Hope everybody's doing well. <laughs> Everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. It's turning out to be a beautiful evening. Look at that, there's some blue coming out in the sky. Rain's moving out, a little bit sticky, but there's a gentle breeze. <sighs> Feels good. A little reprieve from the triple digits. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye. Look at it.